no market access or for the developed countries right but this says that increased from the trade of developing countries increased from 21% to 73% thereby meaning that developed countries opened their sector for developing countries and developing countries were able to export there only then the market access of developing countries would increase otherwise the earlier scenario what you were saying would be other way around yes global imports now these are not imports for developing countries these would be exports right and uh, agricultural uh, on agricultural sector 100% uh, tariff would be bound in in a in a phased period say over a period of 10 years of 15 years what is market access what is market access market but are uh, is the market of developing country big enough for the market for of developed countries now <coughs> there is a difference of opinion now let me clarify that that whether these imports were from developed countries to developing countries or from developing countries or from developing countries to developed countries now there are two three things to be taken into account number one size of the market number two the level or sophistication of goods produced by the developed countries so if if you look if you don't go by the uh, the the captions and just take the percentage so this is depicting that 73% 21 to 73% increased in the trade and that was more or less on exports from developing countries to the developed countries which brought down their tariffs opened up their market and increased the market access for developing countries next now this uh, the table uh, shows that uh, the value of imports and percentage of imports at bound rates is for developed countries it's uh, 737 and uh, the for developing countries is 352 that is that means that about two-fifths of developing countries tariff still needs to be bound so what happened was the entire sector of this uh, of the developed countries is now bound whereas we still have the uh, question still have the provision or still have unbound tariffs amounting to two-fifths of the total tariffs of the developed developing countries Ji. now try to connect that what it said now this slide in fact clarifies the earlier slide now if you come to earlier slide now this says that the increase was 78.78% to 99% of their trade or imports right next now results of the Uruguay round uh, a lot of countries approached each other and uh, we will try to see what happened with Pakistan and these countries uh, in fact uh, had discussions and negotiations on market access with each other and it was expected that about uh, uh, one, 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 fifth, one, one half of the trade would be brought into the market access negotiations but it almost went more than that as developed countries almost bound their tariff bound 100% of their tariff now there are two things when I say bound 100% of the tariff that means binding of tariff lines not tariff rates next so increase in the annual income of major countries by 2005 is expected to behave like that although we just don't fit in here it's for the sake of your information you can refer to these figures as and when required but there's not much we can do about it 
next so th this would be an, an interesting uh, slide which uh, gives you overall cuts on industrial uh, products developed countries on an average of 40% with the average tariff reduced from 6.3 6 to 3.8% and on an average of 20% with the average tariff reduced from 15.3% to 12.30% so you can see the difference uh, or the major junk was reduced by the uh, developed countries than the developing countries next on the uh, the reduction that is on average the reduction was 40 percent but on if you go by the figures it, it was something from 6.3 to 3.8 next नहीं वो 50 परसेंट की जो आपने वो पढ़ी है वो इनफैक्ट मराकश प्रोटोकॉल में का हिस्सा है यू आर प्रोबेबली नॉट देयर इन दैट लेक्चर जिसमें वी डिस्कस्ड कि 20 परसेंट ईच ईयर रिडक्शन करेंगे और वो रिडक्शन पाँच सक्सेसिव ईयर्स में चलेगी स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम फर्स्ट जनवरी 1995 नाइन्टी द नेक्स्ट वॉज टू बी हेल्ड इन फर्स्ट जनवरी नाइनटीन एंड फॉलो ऑन तो वो ट्वेंटी परसेंट रिडक्शन करनी थी विद द बेस ईयर एज नाइनटीन यू आर कन्फ्यूजिंग विद दैट This this is the actual uh, reduction gone in. जी वो उसी हिसाब से उसको एडजस्ट करेगा जी जी नेक्स्ट वाइज ये मराज के ये तो आप यू ऑलरेडी गॉन थ्रू दैट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट Now the the it if you remember that this has to be done on एम एफ एन बेसिस वॉट एवर कंसेशन यू आर गिविंग सो इफ इफ वी नाउ गो टू सेक्टर एनालिसिस वील फाइंड दैट there are some sectors which the uruguay round says that would be zero rated over a period of time there would be no tariffs on that the number one is pharmaceutical sector medical equipments construction and equipments uh, <coughs> distilled spirits farm and machinery equipment paper paper board pulp printed matter and dolls toys and games so these sectors would basically be uh, kept duty free in future हमारे कंट्री पे अभी ये अप्लाई नहीं करेगा दिस गोज होल्ड्स गुड फॉर द डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज और उसके लिए भी फेजिंग है हम आगे चल के देखते हैं कैसे है वो वील बी हेडिंग इफ वी आर ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू अ डेवलप्ड कंट्री समाइम सो नेक्स्ट बट इट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन एनी वे नेक्स्ट ना एग्रीकल्चर में वॉट हैपन वॉज दैट दी सेंस agriculture sector was initially out of gat it was brought within the ambit of gat so the first thing was to do away with the agricultural subsidies i don't know how far we have succeeded or not because there are a lot of hidden subsidies there are a lot of subsidies being given to farmers by the european union and uh, that they cannot do away with let's see what happens and the next thing which the uh, round or the uh, the negotiation looked at was the tariffication of non tariff barriers and this is a very technical subject tariffication means the transforming the non tariff barrier or something which is not transparent into transparency into mathematical calculation or into a numerical value or like we have customs uh, add value duty so this was all done in 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 the agriculture sector marketing <clears throat> domestic support system was also uh, it was brought into some discipline now what is domestic uh, the domestic support system anybody aware of that jis tarah aap khabron mein sunte hain ki qeemat e khareed muqarrar kar di jati hai for gandam ke liye qeemat e khareed ho gayi kapas ke liye ganne ke liye chawlon ke liye chawal to khair export prime quality uske liye nahi hoti normally lekin in cheezon ke liye aur agar koi private sector तो फिर गवर्नमेंट वुड कम एंड बाय दैट सो दैट इन चीज़ों सब को यूरोगे राउंड में एक डिसिप्लिन के तहत लाया गया नेक्स्ट 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 सो बिफोर आई वाइंड अप द एग्रीकल्चर लेट मी से 
that uh, Pakistan has bound 100% of its uh, agricultural uh, tariff. You will also be looking at the slides in greater details to come. And on chemicals, uh, pay, uh, bhi kafi negotiations hui aur iske upar bhi tariffs reduce kiya gaya. And uh, <laughs> separate hai, lekin, nahin, do laws to ban jate hai, lekin developing countries ko ek edge diya jata hai. Unko ye expect nahi kiya jata ke wo itna low aake apne tariffs ko bind kare. Ab we'll try to see ke Pakistan ne kaise kiya, America ne kaise kiya, India ne kaise kiya. We are, we are heading to those slides. But I am just giving you an overview of the chemical agriculture sector, which I have said that the agriculture subsidies are not going to be Domestic support, which is the aggregate measurement of support, which is the agriculture that is better than the agriculture that is better than the agriculture that is better than the agriculture. And then the concept of terrification of non tariff barriers is the concept of agriculture. Initially, it was very difficult to find a non tariff barrier, a quota, and what is the numerical translation? How would you translate that into a, a practical thing? Usko karne ke liye the concept of terrification was introduced. It's, it's an old concept, but it was emphasized in the Uruguay round. Uh, chemicals may be isi tarah se hua or duty rates 5% and 6% pe le jaye gaye. And there was a big concern of uh, some of the countries not participating into the uh, uh, market access negotiations on chemicals which are uh, Argentina, Brazil, India, Indonesia, Thailand and Venezuela. And it, it was expected from this reduction that this 18.2 billion ki world trade ko boost karegi because chemicals are supportive materials for so many other, raw, uh, so many other products. And Pakistan has uh, bound some of its uh, chemical sector at 50 percent. We will definitely go into the detail that at what rate the binding was done and what were the basis of those binding. Next. Electronics may be इसी तरह से हुआ जी and 50 percent to 100 percent Pakistan ने भी इसको cut किया और बाकी दुनिया में भी इसी तरह हुआ है EU European Union's failure to agree to eliminate tariffs on semiconductors अब I have quoted the semiconductor because this is a very small item you all we must must understand be aware of what semiconductors are लेकिन look at the world look at the level of the European Union and other countries who are who who are worried about this basic concept, a semiconductor even? So you can imagine to what extent they would be going into discussion for other other articles. So it's it's the point of concern. It's a matter of uh, their uh, interest in the product that they have even gone to discuss the semiconductors as well next not textile textile is 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 the is the biggest sector in which market access is going to uh, hamper world trade and uh, uh, pakistan is also going to whether it benefits from uh, it or not that is another subject but what happened earlier the entire textile trade was handled by the multi fiber arrangements now what multi-fiber arrangements said, multi-fiber arrangements were bilateral uh, arrangements which were covered under the voluntary export restraints. Now voluntary export restraints are very famous VERs. Earlier it was, it was out of GATT and those VERs were there and it, it was, there are other things as well also known as orderly management arrangement, agreements or arrangement, we'll try to see what it is. Now even, you, you guys are from this class? Hmm? Sig okay. So these uh, multi-fiber agreements were there and European Union, Canada and America, they were controlling the imports or they were protecting their own textile industry by by the use of these uh, uh, MFA arrangement or agreements through uh, which were imposed on individual countries. Now what happened under that? Each country was given a quota, like Pakistan getting 20% quota, India getting 25% quota, China getting a bigger country getting 35% quota, things like that. 
So each country had been allotted a quota and the country could only export according to that quota. And this was out of the ambit of GATT. So one thing GATT, uh, the WTO did was to bring all this into the ambit of GATT and to make it more disciplined. Now under that, there was a phasing, phasing out program that with the implementation of GATT with effect from 1st January, as you all know, I won't name the date because that is the question in your paper today. <laughs> so with that date, 10 years down, down the stream, uh, 31st of December 90, uh, 2004, that was the date when all the quotas would go away. So this was how th this uh, uh, textile sector was dovetailed into GATT and uh, market access is going to be uh, made available to all the, to all the countries. Next. Now, uh, once we are into the uh, textile sector, we will be doing this again there, so I am not spending more time on it. Because we started with 1st January 1995 and uh, then on uh, subsequently tariffs were removed and this reduction was front loaded instead of being, uh, uh, sorry, this, this reduction is back loaded instead of being front loaded. Now what is front loaded and what is back loaded? Any idea? No, 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 hardly near the concept. Front loaded is when, uh, I don't know how to explain that. Like if, if uh, this building, this room is to be dismantled and we say that they, we got one year to dismantle this room and in the first six months we only try to remove the fixtures like fan and doors and the major junk is removed at the end of the year. So in other words, the quotas which should have been removed in the f initial part were taken at the back. Am I clear? So how can you be clear if I am not myself clear? Front loaded means that major jo, jo benefits agar, jo jane the, quota ki removal se, agar wo exporters ko jate, to wo front loaded hota. But they have made it back loaded ke jo major chunk hai, that, that goes off at the end of the period. Exactly. This this is what I mean. Very well said. So this this is this is what happened with the textile sector. Next. Next. This can only in the textile sector same treatment as for developed countries in developed countries. As in other goods? No, it will be other way around because developed countries would be protecting themselves from the developing countries. Because first they were protected, there was, there was a lot of quotas on it. We could not enter their market uh, uh, with, with greater surge. It's, it's going to be other way around. Now, this, uh, the, 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 during this transition period, that is January 1995 to 2005, this was the period when quotas were to be offloaded. Now this period has been taken into the textile agreement and the textile agreement is also known as the transitional agreement. Because after 2005, this agreement will as such not be there and the textile goods will be treated as normal goods under the GATT heading, under the GATT codes, under the GATT law. Thereby meaning all other laws which are applicable to other goods would then be applicable to mutatus mutandus to, in a similar manner to the textile sector. Next. Now this is uh, an important part uh, uh, where the entire uh, analysis of the market access begins and probably ends. Now this gives you a country-wise uh, bound tariff uh, position on industrial products and uh, from moving from left to right you've got countries and from top to bottom uh, from 
on, in, in the first column in the descending order you have uh, the, the, the description of the bound rates. Now if you look at the tariffs of US, European Union, India, Malaysia, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Now one reason that I have uh, put them in this manner is that United States and textile, uh, United States and European Union are going to be very important market sectors for Pakistan on account of textiles. India, because we normally try to compare ourselves with India, Malaysia is also the same. And Sri Lanka and India would also be the contenders or the major partners in the run for having the market access in, uh, uh, in those countries like United States and European Union. Now, if you look at the tariff lines quickly, United States has got about 7,800, European Union 76, and Malaysia has got the highest number. And the Pakistan has got about 6,500 tariff lines, and the share of bound tariff lines is about 28% uh, in case of Pakistan, 8% in Sri Lanka. This means India, uh, Sri Lanka has, has yet to bind its industry. And the lower binding shows that there is not much of industry there as well. Malaysia has bound about 61.8, India 61.6 again. And the European Union and America have 100% bound their tariffs at 100%. And the share of bound tariff lines, uh, uh, sorry, share of bound duty-free lines, now what do you understand by that? Zero rate. So it's 39.4 in United States, 26.9 in, in uh, Europe. Now if you remember the earliest slides, what would be these items? Pharmaceutical and uh, paper, toys, construction material, that, that list must be found here then. And India doesn't have any uh, duty-free binding level, Pakistan also doesn't have, Sri Lanka has only 0.1, Malaysia has 1.6 and share of unbound duty-free uh, tariff lines, uh, it cannot be any figure here because it's already 100% there. and. Uh, Pakistan has also got about 0.2% and this 0.2% this 0.2% this is on account of uh, paraxylene. Anybody familiar with that? Now, if you are talking, if you are familiar with the, the textile sector or the polyester staple fiber, you require two raw materials to manufacture polyester staple fiber. One is the pure teripathalic acid and the other is monoethylene glycol. Now to manufacture PTA locally, that is pure teripathalic acid, you further need to uh, use the raw materials as, as one being the paraxylene and the other being uh, uh, molasses, acetic acid. So, Paraxylene is zero, that is why you've got share of unbound duty-free tariff lines here. Share of non-adwell tariff lines is again 5.22 and 4.2 in case of United States. Next. Tariff lines, uh, I've explained this earlier, but if you see, the, I, I explained that there are about 99 chapters in the Pakistan Customs Tariff. And the, f and the, chap the first two digits represent the tariff. And the next two digit represent the type of the product in that, in that chapter. So that constitutes the tariff line. And then if you add another two digits, you go to six digit sector, which is generally communicated throughout the world and generally accepted all over the world. And if you add further two digits, now if, if we are talking of disks, it would probably 85.2. 24 would be the tariff, it's just the hypothetical thing, it would be the tariff line and if you say disk of this uh, uh, capacity or if you say the chip which, which probably is of this size and the next version of CD, so you can subclassify that. So that the world tariff. Now, now, now it's, it's, it's because there could be at least 10 items in 6 digit level. So it initially when negotiations were done only 6 digits were referred. But now since there are more than about 10 uh, items even in 6 digit concept, so countries tend to move to 8 digit to be very specific so that they are not giving something 
in disguise not, nothing goes unwanted is is that clear next now this this would be uh, little now i i expect you remember what these figures are flowing from and these figures are flowing from the market access negotiations which resulted in 92 93 now if we if we look at the uh, on simple average basis on the product uh, product wise simple average basis we will find that india uh, has uh, got a very high uh, level of uh, binding on wood pulps papers and furniture and if you see argentina argentina is specifically added to it because we have seen the collapse of the economy because of attempting uh, unwarranted globalization and the main area to be considered is the textile and clothing and you see that usa has got 8.9% tariff and eu 7.9 and india 87% so you can imagine the level of protection indian government is granting to its textile industry as compared to that pakistan has got an average of 28% argentina has got 35 sri lanka 45 and malaysia 20% rubber leather chemicals again there is a list of uh, various products but i'll i'll talk about textile while discussing these slides next now what would be the product you will be protecting now you 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 hold your questions till we go to the next slide so we have here uh, uh, the concept of uh, sir so we'll look at this slide maybe we can uh, assume that india will be uh, more affected by uh, more India will be more affected as it has given more protection to its citizens than just being compared to the price. That that is what I am trying to say. So in 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 the non-electrical machinery, USA has uh, uh, not protected its industry much. EU has also not protected. India again 36 percent. Malaysia 10 percent. Now why Malaysia has not protected its industry non-electrical machinery at 10 point because either they are not producing that industry or it's not in much quantities and why european union and usa have kept very low uh, rates on uh, uh, non electrical machinery there could be stringent technical barriers to trade there could be other restrictions that you cannot bring in machinery which is not to their standard non tariff measures so it's it's this picture has got lot of things behind it it's not only that it shows that there is less protection it show it also shows that there are some other ways through which the the country is protecting its industry so it's 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 three sides of the prism and it all depends how you are looking at it next here you will find uh, uh, an analysis based on the value addition concept like raw materials semi manufactures and finished products now if you look at united states it you see that raw materials they allow at about at about 0.8% semi manufactures 4.1 and finished also products at 4.1 so it appears that in america there are only basically two types of industries one which rather one type of industry which is engaged or which is a composite unit which imports raw materials manufacture semi finished and from semi finished to finished so they probably don't have much of intervening in intermediate industry much so they've got the same level now european union has got uh, raw materials at 5.1 and uh, this means they have got their own raw materials a lot of chemicals lot of metals coming in india's uh, binding is uh, further interesting because it shows that their raw materials are bound at 41% semi finished 52 and finished product 65 and you will see whenever you come across any uh, binding schedule or any market access negotiation that developed country developing countries normally follow the value addition concept now like here these countries have not followed the value addition concept but within the case of india it's it's 41 52 and 65 if there is a gradual increase and that increase varies because of value addition percentage 
and in, in the case of Pakistan again it's raw materials 25 and uh, man, semi manufacturers 25.7 and finished products 30 percent now remember these are average rates they are they are not the uh, actual rates or the maximum minima rates they are the average rates next we are coming to that Pakistan Najib mein aap usi taraf aa raha i'm coming to that next so so if if you if you now look at the earlier was a generalized scheme of things with reference to raw materials finished products semi finished and finished now if you want to see them with reference to the specific industrial sector now i'll talk about textile sector india malaysia and pakistan india has uh, bound its raw materials at 39 almost 40 percent semi finished products at 86 percent and finished goods at finished goods tax finished textile goods at 93.8 percent almost 94 percent and if you add up other non-tariff barriers which india has it might go to 150 percent even now what has pakistan done pakistan being very smart it has bound in a, in a very silly manner 5 percent 10 percent and 50 percent now i'll talk about that once i finish that where the mistake has been occurred and how to rectify that now if, if it, we, we don't have uh, any representation from the textile sector but somebody if somebody knows textile he would appreciate that what we are going to do with our economy textile economy next now uh, this is also a, a uh, some further products like non electric electric machinery and uh, here you will find that india has not even bound this area it has le left it unbound and the reason being that they probably want what they want to do here they they would like they have left this thing to read in in the in the further negotiations coming down in the after the uh, cancun round starts in september uh, uh, 2003 so what they have done is that left certain sectors open so that they can negotiate they can uh, they have uh, beneficial negotiations with other trading partners when the negotiations come up next ji i am coming to that pehli wali figures to i will try to defend because it was done by myself next <laughs> i don't know so pakistan's case up to this point i'll try to uh, just try to recap or recapitulate uh, the the basic lecture on uh, market access negotiations and we studied about market access and we found that market access is to increase or boost the international trade and it is a system under which the countries either on bilateral basis or on multilateral basis sit down together and exchange or make requests to each other for the market access by reducing the tariffs and capping them on the basis of mutual on advantageous on, on mutually advantageous position and considering the individual needs of the industry if, if, if you remember all that now keeping that in mind and once those uh, rate those concessions are considered those concessions are uh, uh, finalized they are appended to a country schedule and they are extended to all other on mfn basis and we have had a very lengthy discussion and interaction on on the process now those those, those uh, discussions can be held on two occasions number one as i said when two countries or a group of countries decide to give market access to each other on bilateral basis or on or in the case of multi trade negotiations which normally which is normally the round itself and the last negotiations held were in 1992-93 under the uruguay round in which pakistan bound about 28% of its tariff and now it is going to be another round in cancun Mexico with effect from September 2003 so in, in the earlier round what happened was Pakistan received requests from say about 13 1300 or 1400 requests from various countries now what these requests were 
from Canada, it were on iron ore, tallow, wood pulp, paper, and uh, paper products, coal, wheat, wool, steel, zinc, and zinc alloys. Likewise, Australia also uh, requested for, uh, for, for, for so many products. And you will find that iron ore is common here, and iron ore is also common here. So I'll try to refer back for the benefit of some of you who have forgotten that, that what was the concept of initial negotiating right and what was the concept of principal supplying interest. Now, next please. Now, USA requested on uh, cigarettes, non-alcoholic be beverages, medicaments, rubber and steel, iron ore, again iron ore is there. And e e e European, e e European community or the European Union requested on agricultural products and machinery, etc. Switzerland again on chemicals, textile machinery. New Zealand again on iron ore, you'll find iron ore here again. And wheat, wool would be common in case of... Uh, hmm? Tello is... Just a sabun banta hai ji. Or ye cherbi jo hoti hai. Ji, ye bhi common aari hai. No, no, not yet. Because what is this? This is multi trade negotiation. So in this case, yes, very good. The initial negotiating right would be floating. And unless somebody comes and a case of compensation is there, and then you decide which country would have the biggest benefit. And then since the INR would be floating in this case, the country having the major supplying interest would be taken in, into account. And how, what would determine that a country has major supplying interest? The last three years, exports from that country to Pakistan. No, no, no. Sanitary, fire sanitary, but there's something else. It's not that. Okay. We'll, we'll come to that. We've got a chapter on that. Full-fledged course on it. These, these uh, sanitary and fire sanitary measures, they, they uh, uh, prescribe standards like uh, technical barriers to trade lay standards that I keep on referring the example to door that if you want to export doors to, uh, to Canada or America, they would lay a condition that this door should have a coating or a pigment or a paint on it, varnish on it, which is fire resistant for 30 minutes. So if this room is on fire, this door will not catch fire for 30 minutes, so these sort of things. Or for instance, if you are exporting uh, vehicles or cars, so it must have some provision for kids, door, child lock, belt, special belts, things, things like that. Next. Japan requested uh, uh, machinery and equipment and other miscellaneous goods, Korea, footwear and miscellaneous, and Sweden also machinery and uh, agricultural machinery and there were some other uh, products. Now in all, Pakistan received about 1,390 requests from all these countries in 1992-93 for the reduction of tariffs and opening up of Pakistan's market for these countries on account of these products. Now this, this is one side of, of, of the prism or the, of the, or the board and the other side of the board is that in turn, what, in fact what's happening if you are al allowing Swedish machinery into Pakistan, what you are doing? You are giving market to, Swiss, to Sweden manufacturers. And if they get additional market, what would they be getting? Revenues. Revenues. They would increase their profits. They would increase the capacities back home. They would be giving, offering more jobs. So what, what in net, account, uh, net terms it would mean that Sweden would be benefiting, say on XYZ, if you total it and it comes to 100 units, in turn, Pakistan should be expecting Sweden to open its market so that a beneficial, a mutually beneficial arrangement means that almost on equivalent amount you are able to export to Sweden and earn the similar level of benefit which Sweden earns from your market. Only then it will be an equitable bargain. That part uh, uh, the government kept itself, it did not uh, count, uh, interact with the industry on what products you would like to have market access and in what, in the, what country you would like to have market access. The government handled that exercise. I'm not criticizing the government here, but that was not a professional exercise. Next. 
So while uh, uh, considering those requests, on the, the, the entire requests were basically divided into three sectors, agriculture, textile and non-agri textile or other sectors. And a reduction in tariff bindings at that time was made uh, agriculture sector at 100 percent and textile sector at 20 to 50 percent and other goods at 50 percent. And what is the current applied tariff rate? It should be uh, 4 here. So the current applied tariff is 25 percent, 25 percent and 25 percent. Now there are two things. One is the applied rate and the other is the bound rate. So now we'll have to think, we'll have to decide, is it good to have some cushion between the current applied rate? Now current applied rate means the maximum rate which is applicable today. It is, all, it is known as current rate, it is known as applied rate, it is known as maximum rate, it is known as effective rate, it is known as current applied rate. So it all depends how, how and uh, in, in what way you uh, spell that out. <coughs> Now, the position is that if, 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 if I just try, try to draw a table here, so next let's see what's, what's there. Now, if we just go through the basis of uh, reduction and binding in 92-93, the, the, there was a concept paper prepared and there was a benchmark determined on the basis of which you could reduce and bind your tariffs. Now what that benchmark said, number one, considering the protection levels required by the various industrial sectors of Pakistan. Now this first clause was in line with the article 24 on tariff negotiations. Now if you've got your notes with you and if you remember that said that the tariff concessions or the tariff commitments, con commitments on concessions have to be made considering the mutually beneficial or advantageous position for the two countries and taking, taking into account the individual needs of the country and individual needs of the industry. So this was kept in mind while uh, uh, offering binding on, on the 28 percent of tariffs or on those requests which you had seen. Improved cascaded tariff structure. Now earlier we did, Pakistan did not have a, a, a properly cascaded tariff structure. Cascaded means higher the value addition, higher the customs duty, lower the value addition, lower the customs duties. And the review of para tariffs and the phasing out. Earlier we used to have a lot of uh, 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 para tariffs like ICRA surcharge, import surcharge, development surcharge. We have done away with them, we have merged them into duty, we have reduced them, we have just finished them off. Gradual, uh, gradual withdrawal of tariff concession exemptions and uh, translation of concessionary tariff regime to statutory tariff regime. Now there are two types of tariff regimes. One is the statutory tariff regime which is there in the statute in the order or in the customs tariff itself. And the other is the effective uh, tariff and the effective tariffs is, is, is by way of certain exemptions which are contained at the end of the schedule and it is appended with that that if if the industry ABC imports this raw material, it will be allowed to import at 10 percent instead of the statutory rate that is 25 percent or 30 percent. Now statutory means as per law, official. An exemption is over and above that. Then the tariffication of non-tariff barriers were, were, were considered and Pakistan commitments to IMF, World Bank and uh, Asian Development Bank were taken into account and preferential tariffs under GATT protocol relating to the negotiations among developing countries. Now this is uh, SARC and arrangements like that. And existing GATT bindings at that time were also considered that what was the binding level at that time. So after having taken into account all this, the a policy was prepared to bind the tariffs with agriculture being on 100 percent binding and textile from 20 to 50 percent and non-textile again at 50 percent. Next. Now we'll come to this uh, slide later and if you could just switch it off. I, I, I would like you to copy this table because it, it will help you a lot. And otherwise also. <laughs> 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 
Just tell him to get me a glass of water. Now, this is the zero tariff and this is the applied tariff. This is our uh, average bound tariff uh, on non-agricultural, binding on non-agriculture. We've got a rate in between 75 and then we have got 100%. That is the binding level. for agriculture. Applied tariff is what is your existing tariff for? Now suppose this is the entire tariff. And we have So this, this, is, this is in fact what we have talked about. Say we have got a 100% tariff. This table is also available on my website if somebody wants to have a more uh, graphic look at the thing. If this is the entire 100% tariff, 28% is bound and 72% has yet to be bound. Out of this 28%, Across the board rather on 100% except for the automobiles, we have got a current applied rate of 25%. That means our maximum rate or operative now or current rate is 25%. The non-agricultural product binding rate is 50%. So if the binding is somewhere here, 50% and this is the difference which I am going to explain that what is the benefit of this difference that is the difference between the bound rate and the applied rate and this is on the assumption that in any case the bound rate is going to be more than the applied rate. 25 is the and the bound rate the Exactly. This is the question. Now if you remember, ji, No, I didn't say that we cannot go above 25 percent. I said we cannot cross the bound limit. Now, there are two things, gentlemen. I want you to understand that, at, understand it thoroughly. Number one, there is a bound rate. Number one, there is an unbound rate. Number three, there is an applied rate. Now, what is a bound rate? Bound rate is that the rate which you have bound on the request of a country from further increase, right? So we have bound our non-agricultural sector. Now you got this idea? Okay. Now what it means is that the question between this applied rate and the bound rate is necessary because at any time of, uh, of uh, economy, 
you probably need to protect your industry and if there is no cushion here suppose the bind level was also at 25 and the current applied tariff was also 25 then in increasing anything from the bound level has to be done with the permission of the GATT secretariat and there is a committee on that which the committee is known as the council for trade in goods now since the, the, the applied rate is 25 bound rate is 50 percent now anything but till 49.999 can be achieved, can be imposed without referring the case to the WTO Secretariat or the Council for Trade in Goods. <coughs> so when in 92-93 this bindings was, were considered, this ra rate was kept in mind that what would be the rates, applied rates in 2003, in 2004. So it, that exercise was a very useful and a very, in, it was an in-depth exercise which foreseed, which forecasted that 50% binding level would be sufficient. Now your applied rate is 25%. This subject I am going to take, uh, take up in the, when we talk about safeguard measures, that wh why this is necessary to have cushion. I am not going to touch the subject here, I am just going to give you an over, overview that this cushion is required for protecting your industry without referring the case to the WTO Secretariat. Likewise, in the agriculture sector, if you want to protect something now, the limit would go something from 25 to 99.9. You see, all this you can protect without referring the case to the WTO. We are at the moment we are not discussing the conditions of IMF and the World Bank. Minus that. Can we get back to the slides? So this part of the tariff has been bound and this part of the tariff still remains to be bound. And now it will have to be seen that what other countries are going to request you under the market access and how you are going to ex in, in what manner you are going to accede to their requests and what you want to gain from them so you that for that you have got 72 percent of the tariff still unbound it gives you a good position for re for renegotiation of the earlier rates because now we know that 100 percent is very high rate if even on agriculture we are happy with 25 percent, the industry has not made any human cry. So we, feel, we realize that 100 is a very high rate. So it's probably time to renegotiate that rate, bring it down, offer it the, to the countries who request for reduction and get in turn good markets from them. But that is again if we are able to do our homework in a better manner. Fifty percent is fifty percent, or is the tariff rate? Yes, customs duty. Fifty percent. ये twenty eight percent जो binding हुई थी जो मैंने आपको तेरा तेरा सौ नवे requests बताई थी, उन वो वो requests कुल मिल के twenty eight percent बनती थी. Tariff lines ke. Say that again. It was expected ke wo 20 percent karenge lekin nahi kiya. Up 2003-2004 may be maximum jo hai wo 25 percent hai. It depends on, on, on the, the country's economy, on the, the government. Ho sakta hai ke badhana pad jai. Construction ke upar as such to there is no duty on construction. Construction ke... I was coming to that. Uske andar jo products use hote hai. उसके उसको कुछ बेनिफिट्स दिए अब अगर आप कस्टम्स ड्यूटी सीमेंट की इंपोर्ट के ऊपर कम करेंगे
तो उसका शायद उल्टा इफेक्ट पड़ेगा तो सीमेंट के ऊपर शायद एक्साइज ड्यूटी या कुछ इस किस्म का इफेक्ट किया गया जिसे बाहर से तो ना आ सके लेकिन अंदर का सस्ता हो जाए आई एम नॉट श्योर ऑफ दैट एग्जैक्ट डिसीजन वही मैं अर्ज कर रहा हूँ ना जो सेंट जो एक्साइज ड्यूटी इज ऑन लोकल प्रोडक्शन स्टेज सो वॉट नीड्स टू बी डन वी प्रोबेबली नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई 50 or 100 or 75 products which we can effectively market abroad and we also need to identify the items in which various countries would be interested in getting market access from pakistan homework tabhi acha hoga ki jab aap jo de rahe hain uske badle le kya rahe hain you can balance that off you can scale that off so identify about 20 major uh, trading partners with respect to their uh, imports and exports classify the items in into the following uh, two major textile clothing agriculture and others so you have to see what are your weaknesses what are your plus points you have to apprehend you have to foresee things what others would be requesting from you on on the experience of what you have been doing in the past next and then you can uh, identify country wise tariff non tariff measures which hinder our ex exports to those countries and request them okay we are opening trade for you now you also open up uh, ex uh, markets for us now pakistan on one hand always this time they say that they have broken the sound barrier of uh, 10 billion dollars in exports kitni muddat ke baad hum lage rahe aur abhi tak hum 10 billion dollar ka target ke piche pade rahe this, this should be doubled breaking 10 billion is just nothing we have the we have the best uh, labor uh, uh, and the cheap labor in pakistan we have got raw materials we got everything with us the only thing is that we need to professionalize ourselves we need to go for market access more market access so that can only be done if if we all know at now is from september you we are going to have cancun uh, ninth round and this in this class we have yet to finish the uruguay round which were 10 years back so you can imagine what we are talking what do we talk and how we behave and what figures are we looking at next ninth round or mystery ninth ninth round hoga na this it would be multi trade negotiation now what is the ministerial conference by the way ministerial conference is the the apex body and ministerial conference is the highest body under the gat or wto and all the commerce ministers of respective wto member countries participate in that that is the highest body of the wto ye ye doha doha ki jo ministerial conference hui thi it was decided in that to hold another round of talks in mexico effective september 2003 and the place in which it is going to be held is known as cancun c n c o n or c u n something like that so it दोहा में हुई थी ना लास्ट इजिप्ट में तो नहीं हुई मिनिस्टीरियल कॉन्फ्रेंस इजिप्ट में नहीं हुई वो तो वो तो वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम वो तो अलग चीज़ है ना वो दैट इज समथिंग एल्स अनलेस के बाद में पता लगे कि डब्ल्यू की जगह की जगह वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम ही सब कुछ यू ने वन नो उनको शायद अगले दस साल भी ये नहीं पता लगेगा इंडस्ट्री को कब पता लगता है देखिए ये काम यू यू एब्सोल्यूटली राइट ये काम बेसिकली गवर्नमेंट का अपनी जगह पे तो है ही ये कि वो इस सब चीज़ को देखें और करें और वो लोगों तक पहुँचाएँ लेकिन अब अब ये कहें कि चैम्बर्स की ये जिम्मेदारी नहीं है फेडरेशन की ये जिम्मेदारी नहीं है एसोसिएशन की ये जिम्मेदारी नहीं है वो तो बड़ा मुश्किल हो जाएगा फिर गवर्नमेंट के पास हैं तो उसके जो ऑफिसर्स हैं वो हर बंदा उसमें ट्रेन नहीं होता हमारा जो एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सिस्टम है उसमें तीन साल बंदा एक पोस्ट पे रहता है उसके बाद वो पहले सी को सर्व कर रहा होता है और फिर डब्ल्यू टी विंग में जाके वो डेप्यूटी सेक्रेटरी लग जाता है ना वॉट हैपन इन जो एफ जो गोलरा के पास एक इलाका है जहाँ काफ़ी फायरिंग हुई डी अब वहाँ पर जो सी की जो डायरेक्टर थी वो एक खातून थी अब वो जब वाक़ हुआ तो एज अ पनिशमेंट शी वॉज रिमूव फ्राम सी 
and you'll be surprised to know he was she was posted as deputy secretary wto wing ministry of commerce to aapko unse puche ke bhai ye itna to bata do ki is khatoon ka us training se aur is training se kya vasta hai to ye ye sari baatein hain aur inko madde nazar rakhna padega ab if you remember the first lecture मैंने अर्ज किया था कि डब्ल्यू टी ओ एन इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड बाई वर्च्यू ऑफ डब्ल्यू टी ओ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड हैज बिकम मोर एंड मोर रूल बेस्ड हर चीज़ के लिए रूल्स हैं अब रूल्स के लिए क्या चीज़ चाहिए पहले उनको समझना चाहिए समझने के लिए क्या चाहिए पहले आप उसको पढ़ सकें पढ़ने के लिए क्या चाहिए तालीम चाहिए आपके पास पाँच परसेंट लिटरेसी रेट नहीं है हाउ कैन यू एक्सप्लेन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट टू टू दैम May I was in uh, Faisalabad Chamber and uh, giving them lecture. Try to give them lecture on uh, uh, market access and tariff bindings. For first five minutes, in the first five minutes, I realized that if I won't change the medium of my expression, 90% of them would sleep. Thank you, brother.